So, <clears throat> some of y'all who saw my last video on we can stop prejudice easily may have thought, well, that was kids. Yeah, that wouldn't work with adults. Huh. Apparently, you didn't watch the whole video I posted. So, we're going to see what works on adults. Oh, you want to get paid for today? Well, then stay, but put your gum away. Uh, I don't have a purse on. I have to put my gum. I'm sure that you are inventive enough to find a place for the gum. Now, I'd like for you to notice where she put her gum. You have this problem with blue-eyed people. You give them, give them something decent and they just wreck it. You'll also notice that blue-eyed people spend a lot of time playing look at me. See how cute I am. I can be funny. I can make a joke of this. This is amusing. I'm amused by this. Another thing that is obvious about blue-eyed people is that they're poor listeners. The first thing you have to do when, you get, when you're teaching in a segregated situation, when you're working in a segregated situation, is teach the listening skills. The listening skills are... Number one, good listeners have quiet hands, feet, and mouths. Everyone needs to write these down. I'd like for you to look at the man in the back, in the black jacket. The game we're playing is playing it cool. This is a favorite blue-eyed game, playing it cool. Nobody can bother me, man. I can handle this. I don't have to do this. I'm going to ignore this whole thing. Number two, good listeners keep their eyes on the person who is speaking. I take it you don't have a pencil. Nor you? Perhaps you could borrow one from one of your neighbors. Sir, I realize that you feel that you don't need to write it down. But whether or not you write it down, perhaps you could remember it. Good listeners have quiet hands, feet, and mouths. Do you know what that means? I'm not sure. I believe that. Do you want me to explain it to you? That's okay. I'll get a pencil and write this down directly. Uh, look, blue-eyed people. All of, many of you have pencils. Will one of you please lend him a pencil, or don't you trust him? Which I can understand. Whoa! From the last ten minutes, what have you observed about blue-eyed people? Blue-eyed people are very stubborn, very self-centered, and wish to control as much of their surrounding as possible. People, that wise, I mean. Very inconsiderate people. I don't even know why you have them here in the first place. We have them here because we are required to have them here. We have to. This is um, one of the things you have to put up with. Um. Number three, good listeners, listen from the beginning to the very end. Okay, good listeners, decide to learn something. <clears throat> And this is the thing you'll have the most difficulty with with blue-eyed people. They decide not to learn something. <coughs> Some of you have had trouble with blue-eyed people in your home environment. Some of you have had trouble with blue-eyed people in your workplace. Does anybody have an, an example of that that they'd like to talk about? Anyone? Well, I have two nephews, and one's blue-eyed and one's brown-eyed. And the blue-eyed one, like, he never cleans his room and he's real lazy. And the brown, you know, he doesn't seem to have a lot of energy, the blue-eyed one. Um, but the brown-eyed one, he's real outgoing and he plays in sports and uh, he's pretty good uh, at it. Uh, you know, uh, this seems like a better... Now, hold on. Hold on. This is not a joke. She's serious. She, she for real. She is not portraying a role here. These are real people who, you know what I'm saying? These are the thoughts that they're having based on the atmosphere of the room. Because as humans, whatever the situation that we're introduced to, we adapt to it. We adapt to it. It's so easy to jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> as we're going to continue to see. Kid. So if I have kids, I hope they have brown eyes. You are you married? No. Then it's a good thing you don't have kids, isn't it? Right. Well, you will know what to do when it's when you choose a mate. Right. Would you like to read that first listening skill to me? I haven't got it on my paper yet. Oh, why is that? 
I haven't uh, borrowed the pencils to write it down as yet. And do you think it's unnecessary? At this particular point, yes, I do. Why? Um, well, <clears throat> I, I have it in my head for the most part. There's a lot of space it. up there for it, isn't there, friend? Um, do you suppose you could tell me what She's it is? She's terrible. It has something to do with keeping your hands and feet still. It has something to do with that. <laughs> I find it interesting that you're amused by our having to stand here and wait for this man to do something that everybody else has already done. I find that highly interesting. Stupid, but interesting. If... That's how easy a situation where someone is you could be the new nigger constantly refusing to do what the people in authority ask them to do. What do you know about them? What do you know about that person? Well, I think it's a game with them. Uh, attention. Has it gained anything for this gentleman? Disrespect from, I think, the brown-eyed people. Has it proven anything to brown-eyed people? Yes, it, this is... Uh, Typical uh, trait uh, of a blue-eyed person. Wow. I'll read the second one. Wow. Sound familiar? I don't have the second one. Can I read it off first? You don't have the second one either. No. You have. You were keeping it in your head. What happened to that plan? Just the just the first one I had in my head, not the oh, second. Oh, the other three aren't important. Well, they're probably important. But not important enough for you to write down, right? Well, they're important. I should have written them down, most probably. Most probably? Mm. Does anybody back there know? Mm. You don't mm. have it written mm. down either. Why don't you take a look at these two so-called gentlemen? Now, we need to hear the anybody skills from you. Can be I made the outsider. I'm badgering you, boys. But on the other <laughs> hand, that. on the other hand. You're here to learn something, and if you learn nothing else today, it would be nice if you would learn the listening skills. What do you know now about brown-eyed people that you didn't know before you, about blue-eyed people that you didn't know before you came in here? I, I'm finding I'm going to have to explain things a bit more explicitly to a blue-eyed person. <laughs> wow. To a brown-eyed person. How many times do you have to the listening skills for Roger? Well, Brother Rogers having a rough time with this. Uh, it was about six or seven different times. You think that's amusing, Roger? Apparently, uh, somewhat amusing. As part of the lesson, the corrections department employees took a written test. All right, I need these names and the scores. Uh, I have K R. I'm sorry, I can't read. K R. Just initials. Just K R, just an initial, no yeah. last name. No names. How many? Uh, Eleven. In Churden or Charles, I'm not sure. Thank you, sir. Tell me the name again. Uh, Churden. You can't read the name. No, I can't. I can't make it up. What's your name? <laughs> My name is Chambers. First name? Jeanine. And what was her score? Six. Thanks. E. Riley with a five. E. E. Riley. Well, E. Riley, please stand. You know, it's... What you do to the image of blues with your behavior is unfortunate. What you three people do to the image of women with your behavior really makes me angry. The fact that you do this kind of thing and this kind of sloppy work reflects badly on women. So I she just that double. turned that thing around? Yes. Um, Ma'am, I'd really appreciate it if you'd call us by name when you say you three people. We don't know who you're speaking to. It could be anyone here. My dear, if you wanted me to call you by name, you'd have put your name on your paper. It's on my... It was to be on your paper. You didn't see my papers, ma'am. I didn't get your name either because it wasn't on your paper. That's right. All right, now how can one call you by your name if you don't care enough about your name to put it on your paper? Don't expect don't me to worry me. about it. Don't expect me to worry about it if you don't put it on your wow. paper. Wow. Don't sit here and say, my name is important to me after you have just deliberately not put it on your paper. 
I you're do. being I totally unrealistic. It's important to me. I remember saying, I like to know who you're speaking to you when you say you three. Then what should you do? Ask you to use my name, which I did. And where should your name have been? Right where it is. On your paper? And on my birth certificate. Is it on your paper? <laughs> no, ma'am. Where'd you get a birth certificate? Same place you got Out of a slot machine, same as you did, lady. <laughs> I think you're probably right about your own. Wow. At least I know who my woman? parents are, ma'am. <laughs> Is she being rude? Yes. She being inconsiderate? Very. She being uncooperative? Very. She being insulting? Yes. Are all those the things that we've accused blue eyed people of being? Yes. Is she proving that we're right? Yes. <laughs> wow. Does anyone have any comments to make at this point? Do you feel that there are important blue eyed people? There are exceptions to every rule. And what are those exceptions? There are a few important blue eyed people. Very few. You Do you think that. that you're one of them? No. That's then why are you up there then? I'm blue-eyed. The difference between you and me is I have a brown-eyed husband and brown-eyed offspring. And I've learned how to behave in a brown-eyed society. And when you can act brown enough, then you too can be where I am. Wow. I'm be where you are. Are you certain? Absolutely. How do you like where you are? I love where I am. You like it so much that you don't even identify yourself on your paper. I don't need to, lady. Wow. Her using the term lady, where I'm concerned, what do you think she's trying to do? I is it ignorance or is it deliberately insulting? I would say it was deliberately insulting. If it's ignorance, she needs to be taught that to many of us, the word lady is a pejorative. I don't appreciate it. It is, um, it's a put down and it's used to keep women in their place. Correct name. I'm sorry. I will call you by a correct name after this. I won't be kind. That was kindness on your part? Yes. Then I you are calling true. someone a lady is a kindness. Then your problem is ignorance. You can call me lady anytime you like. I wouldn't do that to you. No, I know you wouldn't. I really wouldn't. I, I think that, and that's part of the problem, is a total lack of awareness at what sexism amounts to and how much you contribute to the sexism that keeps you where you are. Come on. It's not I like life. where I am, lady. I did it again, didn't I? Ah, yes. I'm getting ah. fed up with this whole bunch of garbage. Uh, Why? Brown eyed peoples are, are, are no different than uh, we are. I hate to tell them that. They, they have these false delusions and such. Are they being disruptive? No, that. you trained them very well. Uh, I think that's what they did with the stormtroopers in Germany also. You guys do a real good job you sitting think up what's there. happening here today feels like it's what it felt in Nazi Germany? Yes, where, sir. Where do you think you are in that then? Where do I think I am? Who are you if you're in Nazi Germany? Who are you? Uh, the Jews. Uh, <laughs> After wow. For lunch, Jane Elliott helped the corrections department employees analyze what had happened. Did you learn anything this morning? I think I learned from the experience of feeling like I was in a glass cage. I was powerless. There was a sense of hopelessness. Uh, I was angry. I wanted to speak up. And yet, I, at times, I knew if I spoke up, I'd be back in a powerless situation. I'd be attacked. Uh, a sense of hopelessness. Imagine what African Americans you feel like. Have experienced that before? I realized this morning that there were very few times in my life that I've ever been discriminated against. Very few. Yeah. And you were this uncomfortable in an hour and a half. I was amazed at how uncomfortable I was in the first 15 minutes. Shit! Can you empathize at all then with blacks, minority group members in this country? I'm hoping better than before. Hoping. Tried to argue with you. you That's you, it. You said, <laughs> he just hoping just now. Your argument as as reason for us being uh, lesser than the uh, brown eyed folks. You know, you couldn't win. Yeah, but don't we do that every day? Uh, I think I think some do. Yeah, but I, I would hope that I never get so unreasonable. I I you know the, the statements you were making were, were groundless and such, and yet we couldn't argue with them because if we argued, then we were argumentative and and uh, you know. Uh, not listening and that's how they set African Americans up. He oh loud. That was frustrating. To me. Loud black guy. To me was loud slave guy. That's what you just called. On their hands. 
my group here. Black is, means slave. I, I didn't think the boisterous enough in our opposition to the whole thing. Why didn't you people support one another? Why didn't the blue-eyed people? The blue-eyed people on this side just sat there. And let's face it, you're Need cutting your asses. Need a gritty. Right? <laughs> Why did you just sit there? Well, I think that's symptomatic of the problem as a whole. We see that, you know, in society in general. We see a few people who are making a lot of noise, and the rest of the people sitting back waiting to see what they're going to do. Okay, as long as I was picking on you and him, I was leaving you alone, right? Right. I'd say a lot of people, except that they let, have a few people do their fighting for them, and they stand back, and, and if this person's going to win, then they'll get on this side. But if that person's not going to win, they'll stay back over here, you know. Wishy-washy. If you were in a real situation where you had to do something about racism, would you would you stand up and be counted? Yeah. What I would do, I don't know. It would depend on the but exigencies. But you would do something. I would have to do something. I couldn't go home tonight and face my kids if I didn't. Huh. How did you grind people feel while this was going on? Embarrassed. Sense of relief there wasn't a blue-eyed person. Sense of relief that you had the right color eyes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I really understood. At least I felt that I understood what it was like to be in the minority. I Why were you angry? First of all, because it was unreasonable. Secondly, because I felt discriminated against. Thirdly, I think that all of us, everyone in this room, has dealt with discrimination on both sides. You don't have to be black or Jewish or Mexican or anything else. Everybody else get a culture but black. And as you become you a color because you you're, you're nothing. Deal with those feelings within yourself. You learn to handle those, and when you feel yourself uh, in a situation that you can't get out of, which we couldn't, we were a captive audience, and it was not a normal situation because normally you aren't badgered. What if um, you had to spend the rest of your life this way? They killed themselves. I don't know how to answer that. You don't wake up every morning Weaklings. knowing that you're different. You wake up as a white woman who is going to her job at 8 o'clock or whatever, where a black person is going to wake up knowing for a minute they get up out of the bed and look in the mirror, they're black. And they have to deal with the problems they've had to deal with ever since they were young and realize that I am different and I have to deal with life differently. Things are different for me. It's not fair. And I don't think you can really say that you have felt, maybe you have felt some sort of discrimination, but you haven't felt what it is like for a black woman to, to go through the daily experiences of uh, arguing and saying, listen to me, my point of view is good, you know, what I have to offer here is good. And no one wants to listen because Preach, the point sister. is right. That's the way things are. Preach, sister. I think the necessity for this exercise is a crime. No, it I is a want crime. to see it used more widely. I want to see it's the necessity for it wiped out. Right. And I think if educators exactly. are determined that we could be very instrumental in wiping out the necessity for this exercise. Yes. But I want to see something used. I'd like to see this exercise used with all teachers, all administrators. Come on now. But certainly not with all students unless unless it's done by people who are doing it for the right reasons and in the right, right way. Yes. I think you could damage a child with this exercise very, very easily. You could. And I, I would never suggest that everybody should use it. No. Um, You're not qualified. I think you could have training classes for teachers, bring them in, put them through the thing, explain what happened, do the debriefing, and then practice doing this until teachers, until a group of teachers were able to do it on their own. And I think teachers are not disabled learners. <laughs> they could learn to do this, obviously. Uh, that take too much time to do. Anyone can do it. Too much I'm money. A super teacher to do this exercise. Ah, it's too hard, too complicated. Began in a third grade classroom has nah. spread from students to teachers to corrections officers. At the center is still a single teacher determined to inoculate her students. Huh? Well, we were uh, getting down to the itty gritty. And as you see, I mean, come on. If you still feel the same after watching this, then you're the devil <laughs> straight up because there's no way in the world you can continue to justify discriminating against anyone for any reason other than 
they have systematically shown you that that they're that person. If someone does the same thing every day, day after day, day in, day out, that's who they are. So you're not discriminating against them when you say, oh, he lazy. He come back from break late, go to break early. Never complete his assignment. Never. Always slow us down when he working with us. If that's what he show you, that's who he is. So you're not wrong to describe him that way. But <laughs> they got a new guy and asked who would like him on their team. And he's an African-American. And people start mumbling and grumbling saying, oh, they always late. Go to break early. Come back beyond the time. Never complete their assignments. You don't even know this dude. He could be the hardest working man you ever seen in your life. That's wrong. That's discrimination. You know what I'm saying? So I hope this helps somebody today to figure out where you've been going astray. And if you correct the wrongs that you've done, <laughs> hallelujah, another soul for the kingdom's been won. Peace, blessings, and love.